Right. I am live from Leicester Square. Um, can you do me a favour? Yeah. I can't uh, message Janelle. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, I'll message. Alright, okay. So, I'm being greeted. I seem to have brought back some E. coli, like food poisoning, I think I caught it on the aeroplane. I was very sick yesterday, um, slept a lot, um, still feel really rough today. Um, been praying the Lord to heal me, but he hasn't, but he has given me abundance of grace to get through it. I slept a lot yesterday and I was very, very sick. And um, the meal, because uh, I'm staying with the meal at the moment, um, she's here. Hey everyone! <laughs> so, um, and yeah, and the Lord has been gracious with me and allowed me to come out today and preach. But it just proves that, you know, it's not His will to heal everybody. Um, sometimes we get sick and sometimes He's glorified in our sicknesses. Um, his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So, sometimes He doesn't heal us, sometimes He gives us the grace to get through it. Hey Janelle! I just got Lamia to send you a message just to let you know I was on live. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, the Lord has been really, really gracious with us. Um, you know, hello. I slept really a lot yesterday um, and was very, very sick. And today I'm still in quite some pain. But um, I've managed to get out today and do some outreach in Stratford. And I'm here tonight at Leicester Square. Uh, and I'm going to be preaching. And look who's over there. They're everywhere. You know, Jesus said that the road to hell was called and wider, many of the people went and run it. So if you see a religion like Catholicism or Islam or, you know, growing really, really fast, then you have to understand that it doesn't mean that, oh, wow, well, you know, look, God is in that. It's the broad way to hell. You know, a friendship with the world is enmity with God. Jesus had 12 disciples. A majority of the people that followed him turned back. Um, you know, and he said that if he was persecuted, then we would be persecuted. Um, and if the world hated him, then remember it would hate us. There's no servant is above its master. And so, you know, it's not, just because, you know, I have people that say, oh, you know, Islam's growing fast. It's because it's the broad way to hell. The devil's not going to attack something that's leading people to hell, you know? So I think because people have like big followings or that God is in that because he's not, you know? Sometimes the you know the smallest of people are the people that are preaching the best gospel message, uh, not the people that are you know if you notice the false teachers have lots and lots of followers compared to the good Bible teachers they always have the smallest um, and so yeah so but anyway you'll have to bear with me because like I said I'm not feeling too well today so but I'm gonna preach the gospel for you and um, yeah. We'll see, God willing, how things will go. All right, okay. Let me turn this. All right. Can you just... All right. God bless you, Linda. I'd like to share with you today the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many people in this life that are not a group of Christians, but not everybody is born again. There are many people in this life Okay. 
Um, but I slept so much. I literally, I think I went to bed at half past seven last night and then I slept till half eight this morning and I've still got a bit of pain today and stuff but I'm much better than I was. Um, I think it's just something I picked up. I travelled through from, because I was in Africa and then I passed through um, Ethiopia and it's got to be one of the worst airports I think. Ten dollars they wanted to charge you for some fries from um, Pizza Hut. Ten dollars. I mean seriously. I could not believe the prices of things there. It was literally daylight robbery. Not even England would have the audacity to charge you that much money for some fries. I mean ten dollars like which would work out about eight pounds. I was in shock, honestly. And then I ended up having to go through security and security and more security. It was just awful. So, but anyway, I'm glad to be back now. Um, and so I'm here this weekend in London. So, we've got like a singer over there and then we've got Islam. They're just everywhere, honestly. It's so grievous to my heart because they're deceived and they're deceiving others and they don't recognise it. My sister, I just can't wait for Jesus to come back and get rid of this rubbish. Like, honestly. I pray for these people, I really do. Yeah, the world is getting worse. It really is. Yeah, I know, and we're seeing an increase in deception and that stuff. False teachers are like prospering in the world. I know, I know, Kev, I know. Yeah. Christians to be out there contending for the faith, to exposing the lies and preaching the truth. You know, I get accused of preaching the hate, um, but it's not hate. All I want is to see people come to the knowledge of the truth, come to faith in Jesus and be saved. There's no, there's, you know, that's one of our greatest joys as a Christian, to see somebody come to faith in Jesus. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. The world is the world is, is hatred. When you expose lies like Islam, Catholicism, LGBTQ, whatever, people don't like it because you're, you know, you're making them uncomfortable. But I'd rather make them uncomfortable oh. now. What is this for? I'm talking about Christian Jesus. Ah, respect Jesus, love Jesus at all times. Are you a Christian? No. Okay. I'm an atheist. Well, why are you an atheist? Do you believe that nothing created everything? No, 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 no. Something must have created it. And what? How do you know it's Jesus and anything else? Well, that's the thing. You have to do your homework. Okay, then how? Okay. Well, first of all, you have to establish that there is a God. Why would you establish that all of a sudden? Well, because you have to look at the fact that there's a creation. But why would you establish that there's God and there's not like something else? What, like a Big Bang Theory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't but believe why in that, you... but why? Why is well, that what do you believe in? Just but why would you also get dead up? At least I can go somewhere. No, no, but that's the thing. You're going to gamble on your eternity on the off chance to just maybe. You can't reject the God of the universe that created you and then expect him to say, come into my kingdom and you ever see the paradise. You haven't sought to try to get to know him now, so why would he let you into heaven? How do you? How do you? How do you take that step? Sorry, can I? Oh yeah, no, I'll ask you a question, I'll ask you a question. Okay. I actually have a very, like, why would you follow somebody who requires you to do a certain amount of things? For example, pray to him, but if you don't pray to him, he sends you to hell. No, that's not true. Is that not true? So if you don't pray to him, you can still go to heaven? No. So Ooh. you're saying you Ooh. have to pray to him to go no. to hell? 
heaven. So no. if I don't pray to him, I'm still, I can still go to heaven. No. So I don't need to believe in God to go to heaven. No, that's not what I'm saying. So you have to let me answer you. No, yeah, about course, praying, no, like, from yeah, no, 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 please, People please, do that please. and then they pray Quick. a question, please. question, question. Yes. Okay, but first of all, you can't get to heaven by praying, reading the Bible, being a good person, trying to go to church. God doesn't require that from you. So that's not how he tells you you can get to heaven. The only way you can get to heaven is to believe in Jesus Christ. You're a sinner, I'm a sinner. We've all sinned against God. You lies, pride, lust, idolatry, anger, jealousy, all of these things are sinful and they keep you separated from God. And so rather than punish you, what God did is he came in the flesh 2,000 years ago in the person of Jesus Christ and he suffered and died on the cross for your sin so that you could live forever with him in paradise. The moment you believe in Jesus for the forgiveness of sin, God himself will give you a new heart, put his spirit in you and bring you into a relationship. So it won't be about what you do, it will be about what Jesus did. Okay. And from that, you are going to want to read your Bible and pray and do those things because you'll have a new heart and you'll yeah, be in a relationship with God. That's not how you well, get to heaven. Well, but if you reject Jesus and you think that you can get to heaven by being good, you're not going to make it. So, oh, no, 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 no. What I have to say is, so, what you're saying is, is if you don't believe in Jesus, you will not go to heaven, yes. you will die and suffer in hell. Yes, because of your sin. So, just because you don't believe in him, No, it's your, sin. it's your no, sin. It's your sin. No, what you're saying is. Do you want to read the gospel? No, I'm okay. But, but you're, you're saying, not okay. But no, the point is, is what you're saying is, if you don't believe in God and Jesus, you should fucking die in hell, you should suffer because you don't believe in him. Because you don't believe in him, you should suffer. Okay, okay let me ask you a question. No, 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 no. Don't do that. No, no, no. Right, let me ask you a question. No, no, it's not. Let me ask you a question. If you no. see a thief no. or a murderer or let's say a paedophile. But suddenly you turn into Jesus, Hold on. you're okay. No. Let her cook. You don't let her cook. Sorry, cook. sorry. Let her cook, okay. Miss. No, right. I'll let you cook. I'll let you cook. Okay. You see a thief, a murderer, or you know, a pedophile, or something else like that, and they're standing before a judge in this land, and they say, you know, they go up to the judge and they say, I'm a good person, I did a load of good work, but I still did this crime, you know, can you let me off? And if, if that judge was to say, okay then, you can go free, we would be like, he's got to be the worst judge in the whole world, you need to punish them for that murder or that crime that they did. We would demand justice. Well, God is more righteous than any judge of this land. And if you have sinned against him by lying, stealing, hating your heart is the same as murder, looking at a woman with lust is the same as adultery, you've committed sin after sin after sin, including rejecting him, he likewise is going to judge you for that sin. But rather than judge you, he made the way for you to have salvation because he paid that sin. It's like you are in the court of fine and somebody going in and paying that fine for you. And you saying, thank you very much. You would accept that, would you not? So Jesus paid your sin debt. Now you need to accept that and receive that free gift of salvation by faith in Jesus. Oh, by believing in him. That's it. But you have to believe that he is God. You have to believe that he died for your sin. But what's the here? That's what the gospel of no, one, more, one more question. Okay. Can I just get in here? Right. What if... Let's say in scenario sense, I've never sinned in my life. You have sinned. No, let's just. You just. No, let's, no, of course I've sinned. No, of course I've sinned. It's sex, not but we just, sin. no. I'll give you both. We're just, yeah. we're just putting it into perspective. If I've never sinned in my life, in the book of gospel, in the book of Jesus, will he accept me? And I don't believe in him, but I've never ever sinned in my life. I've been a perfect human in his yeah, book. No one is perfect. But in his book, I've been perfect. I've no never, one is perfect. But I'm just saying, no, no him, perfect. let's imagine. Do you know imagine. the first commandment? Let me show you. No, let's just imagine. Please, please, just you stop for one second. No, 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 just no, for one second. Just, just for I'll just argue. There is no saying. argument sake. Because I'm going to show you the first wanna, no, commandment no, just in the Bible. Oh, she's not going to I am. What is it? Look, what is it? the first commandment, I am the Lord your God, which brought you, the first commandment, this the Lord spoke. I am the Lord your God, which has brought you out of Egypt, out of the bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You shall not make any graven image unto any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above. Or that in sounds the earth like tyranny. So basically, if you reject God, you committed the first sin. So See, even, that's tyranny. Oh, wait, that wait, is no, no, wait, no. Stop. Wait. What's it? If you reject a person, only God is perfect. He will, fucking, he will Lost, slay you and he'll send you to hell. Lost, tyranny. Wait. See, I'm this done. is the thing. He tells us in the last days no. there will be. So the people oh, will be 
he's my Renee. If you don't fight, don't believe in him, he'll fucking fuck you off and fuck you to hell. Fuck that shit. What's the difference between, say, for example, a Christian God out and Islamic God? Well, this is the thing. Jesus said that you have to be born again. So you can't be going, join church, join religion and think that that will save you. You have to be supernaturally born again. So when you come to believe in Jesus, he'll take your heart of stone, give you a heart of flesh and put the Holy yeah, Spirit in It's a crazy word, but just pause. So, for example, an Islamic God and a Christian God. No, religion is not a God. He wants a relationship with you. And the only way you can have that relationship is through faith in Jesus Christ. When you come to believe that Jesus paid for your sin and was buried and raised on the third day, and you confess him as your Lord and Saviour, then Jesus will give you a new heart, put his spirit in you, and bring you into a relationship. It's about a relationship with God that comes through our faith in Jesus Christ. That's the difference between Christianity and any other religion in the world. I read a book. Well, read it. I pray you read it. And help your friends. Because it will be because of his sin that he ends up in hell. All right? And Jesus paid that sin because he loves him and he wants him to be saved. But you can't get to heaven based on your works. All right. Okay. Uh, right. People don't like it, but they don't realize how sinful they are. They think that they're good people. And they think that, you know, it's unjust. Um, but, you know, God, in, God loves us so much that he came into his creation, suffered and died on the cross for us so that we could have eternal life and live forever with him in paradise. And then they're like, oh no, if I don't believe, well, you, you reject the only way of salvation of, and think that you can, you know, God is just going to let you into heaven in your sin, that you can reject him and live however you want. And then God's going to say, well, come in. I don't think so. You need an atonement for sin. You need to be cleansed of that sin. You need imputed. You need to be perfect. You need righteousness, perfect righteousness. We don't have that. So Jesus takes us in and gives us his righteousness. And it's through our faith in Jesus Christ, you know, that we can have rec uh, re uh, rec uh, redemption and reconciliation back to God. That's how much God loves us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So, yeah, I pray that as well. Okay. So, I'm going to preach again in a moment. Well, the thing is, Jesus is God. So, you reject Jesus, you reject God. And that's the greatest commandment in the Bible. So, they reject him, they reject God. And, and Jesus said, you know, when the Pharisees thought that they had a relationship with God, he said, if you were from God, you would love me. So if you don't love Jesus, it's because you don't belong to God. Um, so you can't reject Jesus and no one, no one is perfect. You can know it's little children that they just grow up, they lie, and you don't even need to tell them to lie. They just do it. I remember my oldest child was um, a baby and you know, I, I can't remember what I did. I think I don't think I did anything, to be honest with you. But I remember going in the shop with him one day, and he would stuff things behind his back. Um, you know, like obviously he's in the army now, and he's a born again Christian, and he's doing, you know, he's doing okay. But praise God, he saved him at the age of 16. But this is my point. He was less than what 18 months old, and he would do stuff like that. And it's because we just naturally grow up to sin against God. It's our nature. But just because we have a sinful nature doesn't give us the right to do sinful things. So therefore we will be judged for that sin unless we repent and put our faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. So. Oh, okay. One, two. One, two. Right, I'm going to preach again for a little bit. Do you want tracks? Some tracks to hold? Okay. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Put it the other way. Everyone's looking right. at me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay, there we go. Okay. Alright, okay. <laughs> And I 
relationship with God. And this is what God wants from us today. He wants to be on your work. He wants to make you personally and intimately. He wants to have a relationship with you. You are separated from him. And so what God did was to say Yeah, he's a 
because she's been going to these different places and preaching, uh, reading the Bible. I said, it won't be long before you're street preaching. And today, two times, she put the microphone on and was preaching the Bible. So I told her that she was doing So Janelle has a channel as well. So yeah, she's got a really good channel. So to subscribe to both of them. So... Yeah, Lord willing, I'll be better tomorrow. I'm praying I will be. No, I like it. You're exposing false teachers as well, Janelle. Thank you. You're contending for the faith. So. But both of them channels are really good. Subscribe to. Give you and hear my voice and Janelle's channel as well. So. Amen. So, I'm probably going to sign off soon. So. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. So, are you going to do another? Because everything's got to go off. In five minutes, all the microphones have to go off. So I might preach for five more minutes. Still nice and then. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to use the microphone? Yeah, One. Yeah. One, two. I need 20% on my battery as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I preached. So, do you know what? I didn't share it. But when I got off the bus, the aeroplane at Ethiopia, there were some Muslims. And I think I heard them saying something about going to. Um, oh, what's it called now? Um. Oh, I can't remember the place, but I was a bit worried that they wouldn't um I was a bit concerned. Like, I heard them and they were talking about going to this place, and I can't remember the place off the top of my head. But I thought, oh my goodness, I sat, I got on the shuttle bus full of people, and I sat down and I'm like, I really don't want to preach the gospel. I'm in a foreign place, I'm by myself, I'm in Ethiopia, I'm like, you know, obviously I don't have my camera out or anything like that because I don't. I do a lot of work off camera as well, and I could just feel the Holy Spirit, like as if the Holy Spirit was kind of leading me to speak. And so I got up and I just preached on the bus to the Muslims because I was, because I just felt like the like it might be the only time that they would be saved, that they might hear the gospel. Um, but you know, I had so much joy as well. Ah. Yeah. Alright. So Lamia's gonna do a reading, a Bible reading. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you watch her. She's alright with that. Do you need to film it? Can you record it? No, let me record with your phone as well. I know it's not super popular. Hey, you have to get this on there. Dubai. Dubai. And I thought, oh, it, this might be the only time that they, they, they will hear the gospel message. And I really didn't want us to stand up and preach. I was like, no, Lord. But I just, I really felt the Holy Spirit was like, no, I have to get up and I have to preach. And I ended up preaching to the whole bus, um, the gospel, warning them that Jesus is God. And unless they believe that, they will die in their sin and go to hell. I didn't catch it on camera, though, because I did it obviously for the glory of God. But it was a joy to my heart to be able to do that for the Lord. There's, so there's plenty of times when I'm just sitting there and I don't want to preach and I just really feel like the Holy Spirit is like, you have to work. Um, so, okay. Hi everyone, God bless you, let's just work. I'm going to be reading for you today out of the King James Holy Bible, out of the Word of God. I'm going to be reading out of the Book of Luke. I'm going to be reading from chapter 13 to verse 22, the narrow gate. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and so journeying towards Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Rise to enter in at the great gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not when ye are. Then shall you begin to say, 
God bless.